Hello again, we are starting uh, our last chapter in uh, Calculus 2, chapter 11, that deals with sequences, series, and power series. Our first section here is about sequences. Well, sequences are lists of numbers. And the way we denote them are just a1, comma, a2, comma, a3, three dots, comma, a sub n, I can list the next one, a sub n plus 1. I can list the next one, but normally this is good enough, three more dots. Uh, as you notice that this is the first term, this is the second, this is the third, and so on and so forth, terms of the sequence. Now, notice that for there is a correspondence between uh, the uh, um, terms of the sequence, so these are terms, right? Uh, a correspondence between the terms of a sequence and the natural numbers. When n is 1, we have a1. When n is 2, we have a2, and so on and so forth. Of course, if, if we can use a function, then a1 will be f of 1, and f2 will be a2, a sub 2. This is not always possible. Um, now, what is uh, the notation uh, for a sequence? Uh, we like to write a sub n, just a general term, general term. And sometimes, which I prefer actually, uh, I prefer listing the lower limit for n till the upper limit for n. This is not always the case. Um, we can start at 4, we can start at 10, depending on, on the sequence. But that is the general term. So um, I would like us to look at an example before we continue to find the general term. So on page 735, before we even do that, uh, before finding the general term, I'd like to look at 5 on 735 that is only asking us, and this is the general term, 2 to the n plus n, and they say from n equals 2 to infinity. They're asking us to find the first five terms. So when n is 2, the first term will start, so n equals 2 will give us the first term. So a sub 1, and then a sub 2, and a, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. So when n equals 2, let's see what we get. So we have 2 to the second power plus 2. Well, 2 to the second power is 4, and 4 plus 2 is 6. So that will be the first term of the sequence. 6. Then uh, to the second power, uh, then 3. The next term will be for 3. So 2 uh, to the third power is 8. 8 plus 2 is 11. Then 2 to the, th to the fourth power, which is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. And so on and so forth. And we calculate 37 and 70. Uh, let's look at another example. Uh, let's say number 9 on the same page, 735. We're given cosine a sub n, cosine n pi. Since it's not specified, n is not specified, we normally start at 1. Unless we are given a different starting point. So what will be the sequence then? When n equals 1, we have negative 1. When n equals 2, we have 1. When n equals 3, we have negative 1. And so on and so forth. You got the drill. OK. Um, find the general formula. So the general term. So the formula for the general term. And um, let's say, let's look at 17 on page 735. And we are given 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 over uh, 6, 1 over 8, 1 over 10, dot, dot, dot. 
So here we're only asked to find the general term for this sequence. So we notice that this is the first term, so when n is 1, and this is the second term, and this is the third term, and this is the fourth term, and so on and so forth. So what general term will fit this pattern? Well, let's try 1 over 2n. We always come up with an idea, and then we always check. When n is 1, do I get 1 half? Yes. When n is 2, do I get 1 fourth? Yes. When n is 3, do I get 1 sixth? Yes. And so on and so forth. So this is the general term of this particular sequence. Okay, now let's move on to other concepts here. Let's talk about something called the limit of a sequence. The limit of a sequence. So if we have a sequence given let's say, in this format. And we show that the limit of the general term as n approaches infinity exists. This means that it's a number, exists. Then we conclude from here that the sequence is convergent or converges. If the limit does not exist, we will say the, lim the um, sequence is divergent. If limit as n approaches infinity from a sub n does not exist, or is plus or minus infinity, then we will conclude from here that implies that the sequence a sub n from n equals 1 to infinity is divergent or diverges. Okay, another important result here is that if we find if the limit of the absolute value of the sequence exists or is L, in other words, then the limit um, I meant to say it's zero, sorry about that. If it is exactly zero, then the limit of the general term is also zero. And you'll see when that is applicable. So if this is 0, then the limit of the general term without the absolute value when n approaches infinity is also 0. It's a result that um, uh, we should be aware of. OK. I'm on page, page 3. Uh, another result, uh, something very important to uh, remember, note, that if we have a general term r to the nth power, this is convergent only if r is somewhere between negative 1 and 1. If r is less than or equal to negative 1, then the sequence r to n is divergent. Now, uh, one other concept here, and we can look at different problems. Monotonic. We say that the sequence is monotonic if it is increasing or if it is decreasing. Now we also know that a sequence is bounded. It can be below, which means 
uh, that a sub n is greater than or equal to a number. Uh, I should call it a little m. It's bounded below. It could be bounded above if a sub n is less than or equal to another number. And it's both bounded below and above if all its terms are found between a low bound and an upper bound. And another important result here is that any bounded and monotonic, other decreasing or increasing, monotonic sequence is convergent. Okay, so a few examples to look at. We are back to right now page 736. So 29, 736. The question is asking us, uh, determine whether the sequence converges or diverges. If it is convergent, find the limit. Okay, so we have uh, the first example. Uh, a sub n equals 4m squared minus 3n over 2n squared plus 1. 2n squared plus 1. Uh, let me make sure that this is clear. 2n squared plus 1. So in this situation, we have a rational general term. And we notice that both degrees, top and bottom, are the same. And we've done this many times in, um, we've seen this situation many times in Calc 1. So the limit as n approaches infinity from 4n squared minus 3n over 2n squared plus 1. We know it's the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient because the two degrees are the same. But let's say we forgot that for a moment. I will always factor out the degree. I don't care what the degree is here. I don't, I don't recommend you divide like um, it shows in many books. I don't recommend that method. You can use it, of course. So I factor out the degree. So when I factor out n squared, I have 4 minus 3 over n. I don't even care about the degree of the top. I factor the degree of the denominator, which is also, it happens to be n squared. So 2 plus 1 over n squared. The 2 n squared goes away, go away. This term approaches 0. This term approaches 0 when n approaches infinity. So then the limit must be 4 over 2. So the limit is 4 over 2, which is 2. From here, we draw the conclusion that a sub n is convergent. Good. Moving on. Um, let's say 39 on the same page, 736. And we have a sub n equals n squared divided by the square root of n cubed plus 4n. So the same question, is it convergent or not? If it is convergent, find its limit. OK, so um, I will go ahead and find the limit as n approaches infinity from n squared divided by the cube root, I'm sorry, the square root of n cubed plus 4n limit as n approaches infinity, n squared. I factor out the degree. I don't care what the degree in the numerator is. So the degree is 3. So I have 1 plus 4 over n squared. When I take the square root, I cannot write, as you remember, let me just uh, um, quickly refresh your memory. The square root of n squared is not n is the absolute value of n. If n approaches infinity, 
that would be n if n goes to infinity. But if n in other situations goes to negative infinity, the answer will be negative n. So there is no problem here because n approaches infinity. So when I take the cube root from, when I take the cube root, this, I don't know why I'm saying this, the cube root. When I take the square root from n cubed, this will be n to 3 halves, positive n because it's this situation. And the square root of 1 plus 4 over n squared. I know that this will approach 0, so then the whole thing will approach 1 in the denominator here. 2 divided by n squared divided by n to 3 halves, subtract from 2, subtract 3 halves. 2 minus 3 halves is 1 half. So therefore, so this division becomes the square root of n, and limit approaches infinity, the square root of n at the top, and 1 in the denominator, so this is infinity. Because the answer is that, we will conclude that a sub n is divergent. Okay. Good. Uh, moving on, this was 39. Uh, let's take a look at uh, 41. Same page, 736. And we have a sub n, which is negative 1 to the nth power uh, over 2 uh, the square root of n. And this is what I was talking about here. If the limit of the absolute value of the general term is 0, then the limit from, from the uh, general term without the absolute value would also be 0. So let's see if that's the case here. So we will determine the limit of the absolute value, which takes care of this. There is no more minus 1 to the nth power. I'm on page 5. So limit of the absolute value of negative 1 to the n over 2 to the square root of n as n approaches infinity. This is gone because it's uh, plus or minus the absolute value. So when we um, look at this expression, Obviously, when n approaches infinity, this will be 0, which we conclude then the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity is also 0, which means a sub n convergent. Good. Uh, this was 41. Let's also look at 43 on the same page, 736. Same question here, of course. In 43, we have a general term given as 2n minus 1 factorial over 2n plus 1 factorial. OK. In case you don't remember what a factorial means, uh, n factorial, by definition, is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 dot 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 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let's take a look at this uh, uh, generic or general term. So um, we can directly, if you want, to look at the limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, 2n minus 1 factorial over 2n plus 1 factorial. OK. Well, we have to try to simplify this expression. And it's not difficult at all. First of all, I realize that this is a smaller number than this. So I will leave this alone. And then I will. Consider this n. So I have to multiply by n times subtract 1, multiply by 2n, times subtract another 1, and I get from, two, from 2n minus 2n, subtract 1. And I stop there, and I write the factorial, of course. Because why did I stop there? Because I saw and I realized that I could simplify these two. And there is no need to do anything else because when the numerator goes to 1 and the denominator to a huge number, the answer is 0. Which means that this uh, sequence converges. Okay. Uh, this was 43. Uh, let's continue with 47. 736. And we have n squared e to negative n. 
good. Let's see how am I one time. Let's stop for a second and we'll continue in the next video.